Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selam ala seyyidil mürselin. Seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem teslimin kethira. Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. Eyl mubarek. Kula amin ve entum bi khair. Elhamdülillah. Allah Ta'ala has blessed us to reach this day of Eid, the day of the prizes, the day where the prizes are distributed. Brothers and sisters, dear beloved brothers and sisters who've endured this very strange but, and challenging but very rewarding in many ways, uh, Ramadan, our Eid is the culmination of struggle. If you look at our Eids, if we start, for example, with Eid al-Adha, it's commenced to celebrate the struggle of the Hujjaj who've traveled from far and wide, many different uh, places, many different time zones, many different uh, continents of the world, all of the continents of the world, formerly many by foot, the journey of a lifetime, and the, the struggles of being there, so many people, the, the difficulty of moving around, the difficulty of, of maintaining any sort of space, all of this struggle culminates with the great Eid, Eid al-Adha. Or there's a celebration and a commemoration, if you will, of that struggle. The same thing can be said for Juma, our weekly Eid. We struggle during the week. We're going to and fro to learn our, earn our livelihoods. Many of us are commuting great distances during normal times. Uh, we're getting up early in the morning, preparing for work. We're going to work. Then we get off. We go to night school to try to enhance our uh, standing on our job to enhance our earning power. It's a struggle. Then we struggle cleaning and cooking and watching the kids. And that's a joint struggle. I'm not just implying that's the, the struggle of the women. Uh, the men should be assisting in that. It should be a team effort. Teamwork, teamwork makes the dream work, as they say. But it's a struggle. And then so, and then Juma comes. And especially in Muslim countries, we shut it all down. We sleep after Fajr. There's, we don't have to go to work. We go to the Juma after Juma. We go to a meal. If you're in West Africa or Northwest Africa, you get some wonderful couscous uh, at your friend's house or at your, your parents' house. And it's a joyous occasion that occurs every week after the weekly struggle, the weekly grind, the weekly routine. The Eid in Paradise. So we have the three worldly Eids, Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, and the Juma, and we have the Eid in Paradise. And that's the Ru'ya. And that Eid occurs after the worldly struggle, after a life of struggle, a life of sacrifice, a life of self-restraint for the believers, a life of, of, of working and assisting others, a life of service, inshallah, but all of that, a life of illness and disease and deaths and funerals, all of that struggle is what living in the world is all about. The trials, the tests and tribulations, and the believer endures that. And then when we leave this world, the believer has the Eid of the Akhirah, the Eid of Paradise, the Eid of Jannah, which will be the Ru'ya, the beatific vision. Eid al-Fitr, which we're now uh, commemorating and celebrating, Kula Amin Wantum Bi Khair, it occurs after the struggle of Ramadan. So Ramadan, we're fasting, and we're staying up late for Taraweeh, and we're getting up early for Suhoor. And we're reading, trying to make time to read the Quran. And we're going through the rigors of being deprived of food and drink during these fairly long days in the month of May. And it's a struggle. And it's not just one or two days. It's 30 days this year. Allahu Akbar. It's not easy. But after that struggle comes the Eid. And we celebrate. We get the prize of forgiveness and liberation for the, from the hellfire, the great prizes of Eid. And we enjoy ourselves. But then tomorrow, what happens? Friday passes, Juma passes, the weekend passes, we go back to work. We go back to work. You know, we celebrate from the Hajj, then what happens? The struggle of returning home. 
the struggle of dealing with the 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 flu we might have picked up uh, while we were on the journey. We go right back into the struggle. And the same thing for Eid al-Fitr. Tomorrow, we go right back into the struggle, six days of Shawwal, ideally, but any time in the month, ideally right after Eid al-Fitr. And this is shukr. This is shukr. This is a way of thanking Allah for the great, great blessings of liberation from the hellfire, the great blessing of forgiveness coming out of Ramadan and our sins are forgiven. The, these blessings call for thankfulness and fasting the six days of Shawwal is one of the ways we th show our thankfulness. The Prophet ﷺ, when reminded that Allah has forgiven your mistakes of the past or the future, what did he say? Shukura. Would I not then love to be a thankful servant? And how was he showing his thanks? By praying until his feet swole or until his feet cracked, cracked according to different narrations. And so we, this world is struggle, but this world is Eid. This world is struggle, this world is Eid. And that's the way of, of our life. And, and the struggle brings the ease. What would this day be, brothers and sisters, were it not preceded by Ramadan? There would be an empty celebration. But after that great struggle, it's a joyous celebration. It's a fulfilling celebration. It's a deep and rewarding and rich celebration. And so we pray that all of you are rewarded richly for your struggle during Ramadan that you all receive the prize of forgiveness and liberation from the hellfire that you're able to visit the sick or visit your friends and relatives and loved ones during this time and finally that we not forget those as we enjoy the food and the drink as our Prophet وسلم, reminded us of the Eid days that there are days of eating and drinking and remembering Allah as we eat and as we drink, let us remember Allah. And in remembering Allah, let us remember and pray for his servants who are less fortunate materially than we are, who don't enjoy the blessings of clean water, who don't enjoy the blessings of adequate food and nutrition, who don't enjoy, do, and don't enjoy the blessings of, of significant shelter, who is struggling on many different fronts, the Cox Bazaar in Bangladesh, the home of the large Rohingya refugee camp, which in addition to the, 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 uh, the horror and the trauma of being uprooted from their home, seeing their villages burned down, seeing their crops bulldozed, seeing their wells poisoned, seeing their wives and their daughters raped and abused, and then forced into a strange land and the difficulties that that involves. And then on top of that, now COVID-19 descends upon their camp. And then a typhoon or cyclone uh, hits the camp, but they forge on and their faith sustains them. And so brothers and sisters, remember those beautiful brothers and sisters, those in similar circumstances in Syria and Idlib province along the Turkish border, those who are in, in camps in Lebanon or in, in Jordan, those who are in Yemen, the entire country rendered into just a massive refugee camp, denied adequate nutrition, cholera outbreak, by uh, infrastructure, schools and hospitals, clinics being bombed by people claiming to be Muslim. And we're not pointing the figure, finger at a particular side, just as we can point the finger at the Saudis or the Emiratis, we can point the finger at the Houthis and the Iranians and others. So we're not saying that, we're just saying all of them claim to be Muslim. All of them say, La illallah. And none of them have any sympathy for the suffering of their fellow Muslims. May Allah bless us to have sympathetic hearts because we could be cast into that situation of having to make those decisions. May we have sympathetic hearts. May we have hearts that are mindful of our Lord, are mindful of our Lord. And we could go on and on. We could mention in Somalia or Kenya, the refugee camps in Northern Kenya, 
filled with people from the Somali lands. We can mention Palestine. We can mention, we can mention Kashmir. We can mention the entire country of India. And we'll, say, we'll stop with this note, brothers and sisters. The, or the camps in Europe, Greece and Lesbos Islands, or other camps in, in Europe where people are isolated and are suffering tremendously. But it's not a day to, to be overwhelmed with this, but it is a day to remember as we enjoy our blessings and to pray that the blessings we enjoy will be uh, theirs and to pray that if we are tested with those circumstances and we've seen with this virus how quickly things can change. How here in the United States, 35, now 40 million jobs can go in six weeks, six weeks time. It's, it's, we, we, we are no different. Our situation can change just like that. How supply chains are disrupted. Things can turn around very, uh, very quickly. And to, so uh, one way to prevent that, Allah Ta'ala says, If you give thanks for my blessings, I will increase you in those blessings. So thank Allah for these blessings and pray for those who are deprived of these blessings. Pray to Allah that were we in their situation, we would have their faith. If anyone who's been to, to these camps and situations, as I've been, and can witness the faith of those brothers and sisters, those believers under those circumstances, it melts your heart and it brings tears to your eyes. And we pray to Allah Ta'ala as we enjoy what we enjoy, if we were deprived of these blessings, that we still have strong faith, that we still have strong faith. So as we said, this isn't a day to harbor on these things. It's a day of celebration. May you all be blessed. May your families be blessed. May all of your loved ones be blessed. May all of your relatives, brothers and sisters and siblings, parents, children, may they all be blessed and enjoy the blessings of Eid. And in the, uh, in the end, I will conclude with something mentioned by Imam Ali or attributed to Imam Ali radiallahu anhu. Inna min na'im dunya in islamu That from the blessings of this world, Islam suffices as a blessing. And on this day of Eid, we get to see and to enjoy the full beauty of this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blessing that we've been given called Islam. Eid Mubarak, Kula Amin wa Antum Bikhir. This is Imam Zayd Shakir. May Allah bless all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.